I'm Dr. Francisco Roma. I'm going to discuss the concept of business and share my personal knowledge and experience on this subject and draw some insights based on the materials that I've gathered with the hope that uh, the knowledge that you will get from this presentation of this lecture may serve as a guide, your guide, in your search for whatever endeavors you may pursue in the future, especially those uh, graduating students that are here or that are present this afternoon, they will be facing probably a problem after the graduation. Alternatives, whether to go on business or employment. All right, let us discuss the uh, concept of business. What is concept of business? You know, the concept of business existed as early as mankind. It has a biblical reference and a biblical foundation. You will recall one story in the Bible. The finding of Jesus in the temple when his mother Mary asked him, Son, why have you done this to us? And Jesus answered, Don't you know that I am about my father's business? This story alone indicates that the concept of business is forbidden. And you might fall into the trapping of confusion if you will not fully understand business in its basic concept, especially when you make the statement minor on business without knowing what business you are in. All right, how do we define business? There are hundreds of definitions of business, ranging from simple to complex, using different point of view, different framework, different di discipline, different opinion. But even if there are hundreds of these definitions in substance, they mean the same thing. The techniques of this uh, definition using economic framework. Business is defined as any activity, whether direct, uh, directed for the production of goods and services, legal, and then for profit. But you will note that this definition itself contains a lot of elements. The first element it is an activity. But please take note that one single activity or transaction may not be considered as a business. It will not fall under the definition. Because the definition refers to a series of activities. Meaning, there must be a degree of permanency degree of regularity of the transactions or of activities. Another element is this element of uh, legality. In other words, you have to comply documentary uh, requirements and procedural requirements from the very inceptions of the business up to winding up all this illusion, from cradle to grave. Now, the last element is profit. Profit is a built-in element. There is no debate. We cannot debate on this because whether you like it or not, you have to really earn profit while doing business. No one is forced to do business at a loss. Remember this. Now, there is, let us try to compare this definition from the definitions of another author. I'm referring to Monico Ignacio in his book, Introduction to Business, wherein the concept of business is defined as an effort primarily good to meet public legitimate needs at the required time, place, and at equitable price for to compensate a reasonable return for the businessman's effort and risk taken. Take note again that this definition contains a lot of elements. What are those elements? All right. The first element is public legitimate needs, but again, the element of effort is still included. Comparing it with this, with this economic framework, a definition from the economic framework, it is an activity. Effort is similarly also similar to an activity, 
But the second requirement is, uh, the first requirement is, is publicly identified the legality again of the business operations or business that you have to put up. And then the second element required time, place, and equitable price. The most important there in the second element is, what is this equitable price? This refers to trade-off between cost and revenue, similarly to this cost and revenue. In other words, if you produce an item, your production cost is $10,000 or $10 per unit, then you will sell it at $1,000 per unit. Then it is not equitable price. It is an exorbitant price and you may open yourself to the penal sanction of what we call profiteering. Now the third element is compensation returns on businessmen's efforts and risk taken. This refers to profit. There is no need for us to discuss this third element because we have discussed this when we with I, I discussed this uh, definition using the economic uh, framework. Now, fourth element, this is the recent element. Requirements of business to comply corporate social responsibility. What is the very essence of corporate social responsibility? Now, I don't want to give you the definition of corporate social responsibility, but I would like to present this pyramid of social responsibility, wherein it has four important aspects to comply. The first one is economic responsibility. Economic responsibility is a requirement that the business itself must earn profit because it has to pay the corresponding salaries of and wages of the employees as well as the dividend, as well as the return of the investment of the stockholders or shareholders. So the second element, or the second aspect is legal responsibilities. As I have said before, that business must comply with legal requirements from the very inception to, from the very inception up to winding up, from cradle to grave, or from tomb to, 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 from womb to tomb. And then the third aspect, we have this ethical responsibility. This is the most serious issue, issue or requirement. Corruption, bribery, involving also conflict of interest. But the last aspect is philanthropic responsibility. Now, is this philanthropic responsibility voluntary or not? Now, so far as I am concerned, and then the materials that I have gathered, philanthropic responsibility is a voluntary requirement. In other words, it is contingent upon whether the business is in profit or not, because you cannot actually share part of your profit if you don't have profit itself. The saying says, nobody can give what he does not have. So in other words, if you will take the holistic concept of corporate social responsibility, partly it is voluntary and partly it is compulsory. All right, given now this concept of business, let's move on to another important aspect of business. I'm referring to the forms of business ownership. This is otherwise known as an alternative forms of business. There are only, basically, there are only four types or forms of business ownership. Sole proprietorship or single proprietorship. Then we have the partnership. And then we have this corporation. How do we define these forms of business ownership? The first, the sole proprietorship is defined as it is being owned by a single owner. Of course, if we were to describe or give a description, some or more risk description on this, dip, and this first type of on business ownership, sole proprietorship is an oldest types of type of ownership. It is easy to organize and at the same time, it is also very easy to dissolve. Now, partnership. 
Well, we have this definition. It is an association of two or more partners contributing money, property, and services with the intention of, of course, uh, dividing the profit from among themselves. And that is the contextual definition of partnership. Now, corporation, in some other countries, we call this company or limited companies. But the definition is only one. The generally accepted definition of a corporation based upon the corporation law or co company law, it says that corporation is an artificial being, all right, having the right of succession uh, with, the, uh, with the attributes, duties, and properties expressly authorized by law or incidental to its existence. So these are the basic forms of business organization. But how do we distinguish one from the other? All right. Comparing these two forms of business, the common meaning the point of comparison is in this column. And we have this uh, sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. Holders. Now, as to liability, is over a sole proprietorship, the principle of unlimited liability applies. Similarly, also with partnership, the principles of unlimited liability applies, whereas a corporation, it is limited liability. What is the distinction of this limited or unlimited liability? In cases, the company or the corporation or the business so, runs bankrupt. Then the creditor can go after the investment when it comes to sole proprietorship and partnership, and the properties of the owners. Whereas in a limited, meaning corporation, limited liability. It is only up to the extent of the capital contribution, shares of stocks of the shareholders or stockholders. It cannot go beyond and go after, meaning the creditors cannot go after the personal life, personal properties of the stockholders or shareholders. Now, easy access to capital. Of course, there is no such thing as sole proprietorship, sole proprietorship and partnership. But in corporation, yes. It has an easy access to capital market. Now, when it comes to management and corporate and ownership separate, is the management and ownership separate? Of course, no, in so far as sole proprietorship is concerned, it is not separate. And in partnership, same or so. But in corporation, there is a separate control and management. Because who controls, who owns the corporation? The shareholders and the stockholders own the, cor the corporation, but the one that controls the corporations is the board of are the board of directors. Please take note that in corporation, the management of the business is always based upon the board of directors. And the last uh, basis of comparison is. Are the business owners is exposed to double taxation. Is over as sole proprietorship and partnership is concerned, there is no such double, ta double taxation. But in corporation, there is an apparent, apparent uh, double taxation because the government will tax the dividends of the stockholders and at the same time the income of the corporation. Hence, there is this double taxation. All right, so given all this comparison, before I end this lecture, I would like to point out and present this equation intended for the graduating student who are present here. According to Jim Crow, employment gives you a living. Business gives you a purpose. Graduating students, after your graduation, mind your own business. Thank you, gentlemen. Good